Hello and welcome to this quick tech tip on the Redline E3 Intelligent I.O. modules uh, connecting to a Redline HMI or data station or modular controller for that matter using the Crimson 3 software. So starting with Crimson 3 I have opened up a new database and here we can see the E3 Intelligent I.O. and the part numbers. If I just scan through there you can see the different versions you can get, different I.O. mixes and matches inputs and outputs generally consisting of either 16 or 32 I.O. and uh, all of which have two Ethernet ports, a serial 485 port and a programming USB port. The Ethernet port is quite unique in that um, it comes as standard as two and they can be used on individual subnets or it can be configured to um, pass through so in and out as just a standard switch or alternatively we can set it up as a redundancy port so there will be a ring between all the different I.O. points on a network. Okay so we'll go ahead and um, select this one here, 32 analog current inputs, okay and as you can see uh, the intelligent I.O. device supports two protocols 6.NET UDR and Modbus UDP as a slave and also as a master. Inherently it's a slave so that's great, there's no setup need to be done just configure our IP address whatever that may be and um, we've got Ethernet port 1, Ethernet port 2 if desired. Uh, the download's automatically enabled, so we can download via Ethernet. And then we've got options, so this sets up the dual Ethernet port on how it um, responds. So whether it's two networks or forced as a ring switch, we're going to follow the jumpers as the default. Okay, so we've also got a 485 port. Here we can select the protocols we want to talk. For now, um, we're not using it. Watchdog and Heartbeat, tick all those and it's really just a health status of the device itself so it responds back to the Redline HMI and uh, tells it what's going on which is good. And then we've got the web server itself so we'll enable that and the web server enables you to see all the I.O. and um, the readings that it does and the status. For now let's um, have a look at the I.O. channels and see how it's configured. Here are all our 32 analog input channels. Um, the first two channels on all the devices are an, uh, the ability to have high speed set to them um, but by default obviously it's the 16-bit uh, integration um, you can choose the the right input per channel that you want to have whether it's fast or slow um, they're also to mitigate any noise you might get on the analog inputs if we click up here to IO channels it actually tells us which model we have the 32 and it also tells us the um, uh, registers the from start to finish but also additional registers that you might not know about um, free internal registers are, that are available in the um, digital and the analog spectrum of the different hardware devices so all the different ones are pretty much the same sheet page as what you see depending which model you get obviously this will change accordingly okay so now that we've done that there's also a security manager um, should you want to create a logon um, and enable some changes we can do that but uh, today we are going to keep going on now that's all I need to do. If you wanted to change any of these settings, station name, station number, they're just um, general project uh, things as well as the serial number of the device just for tracking and you can pick that up in the um, uh, Modbus registers. Apart from that um, I think we're ready to go so to get this into the device um, because this is a configuration that we're downloading into it uh, we would need to go to link options and select how we're going to download into the device whether it's TCP, so Ethernet or um, USB or serial. So we're going to go USB and then you'd obviously just click update or uh, link and send. Once that's in and done, we can then program the Redline HMI or uh, modular controller. So let's have a look at that. Uh, no, I don't. So let's pick up a, um, a data station, a DSP ZR for instance, which doesn't have any I.O. on it. So this is a great example of using some remote I.O. on such a device. So we'll click OK. And uh, to get that connected, again, we need to make sure we're working on the same uh, subnet. Um, so the intelligent E3IO was uh, .21, whereas the data station is .20. Um, so now we'll head to protocol 1, <coughs> and we shall select the red line driver, E3 master. Click OK, and now that we've got the protocol selected, we can choose the type of E3 module we're working with, which was the um, 32AI20M. So match the station number and the IP address, and you're right to go. Okay, well, now let's set up tags. So let's go to data tags and select new tag. 
data source will be the new module we've just created, so E3IO, and uh, we're going to select the um, analog inputs, and we have the onboard, which is the physical, and then the internal, which is the um, input, internal registers. So analog input 1, onboard IO, analog input, the type word is 16-bit, long is 32-bit integer, and then real is 32-bit uh, floating point. So we'll stick with the word and click OK. And we can give this tag a name, so AI1. And uh, then we can head across to display pages, and on the right hand side our tag, you can put that on the page. So let's scroll in a bit better. And uh, there we go, that'll give us the, um, the number up there once we get connected to the web server. So let's enable the web server, tick the box, now using port 80 and the um, IP address here into a web browser, we can see that come up. So let's download that into the unit. Again, same story, link options, USB and send. And that's it, that's how you configure the two devices to talk to each other and to read the I.O. Thank you and until next time, have a good day.